Good afternoon and welcome to the Angry Astronaut. So another update on Spaceport Cornwall. Lots of things happening at this small, humble spaceport in the southwest of England. And I'll tell you something, this one is pretty exciting. Not necessarily because of who they've built a new relationship with, because this is something that's been developing for a while now, but just because of the scope of the types of missions that can now be carried out or in the near future could be carried out from Spaceport Cornwall. We're talking about Space Engines Limited, as they are called in some countries, Space Engines Incorporated, etc., a company that's working on a reusable space plane, and they are going to be relocating one of their test articles uh, to Spaceport Cornwall here in the matter of weeks. As a matter of fact, it may already be happening right now. And here's what's important. Instead of humble, horizontal, launches that involve a few hundred kilograms worth of payload. This is a company that's looking to deliver several metric tons to low Earth orbit, and more importantly, more than a metric ton to lunar orbit, which means what I said in the thumbnail is no exaggeration. In the future, we could see lunar missions being carried out from Spaceport Cornwall for a variety of different reasons, not necessarily because of who they built this new relationship with, but because also of the new capabilities that they've built into the spaceport itself. We're going to talk all about this in just a moment. Sometime later this year, the employees and customers of Newquay Airport, together with a number of the nearby residents, are going to start hearing new types of engines being tested and fired up as a new horizontal launch provider from Edmonton, Canada shifts into high gear. Now, the arrangements that they have made recently is to lease a number of test facilities at Spaceport Cornwall in order to get their engines up and running and finally to start implementing them in conjunction with a number of spacecraft, or shall we say space planes, that Space Engine Systems plans to introduce to the launch market. And unlike most horizontal launch providers, and this isn't exactly a conventional horizontal launch provider as we understand them, more like an SSTO or space plane solution, but a lot of the principles are the same, but we are going to be looking at deploying rockets not at 10,000 meters the way Virgin Orbit was doing it, but rather at an altitude of about 80 or 90 kilometers. And at that altitude, you can get a lot of Earth's gravity out of your way because you're essentially in suborbital space. And once you achieve these types of altitudes, it allows you to send up much, much larger payloads with smaller rockets. So the first hypersonic test article that Space Engine Systems is going to be sending out to Spaceport Cornwall is this little guy known as the Sex Bomb. Yes, a provocative title, but nevertheless, that's what we're looking at here. And as you can see, it is not the most sophisticated looking craft. It doesn't have a whole lot of nice clean lines or anything like that. It looks like something that someone might have assembled in their garage garage, but it is a functional hypersonic space plane capable of Mach 5 speeds, and this is what's going to be taking off from Spaceport Cornwall very soon. Obviously, this thing is not designed to put anything into space, but rather to test the initial concepts of the engines that are going to be used on succeeding space planes, but the capabilities of the next planes in the line are significant indeed. Like most space planes, they're driven by hybrid engines. In this case, the DOS GNX engine that is both a turbojet and a ram 
Ram jets. Turbo jets are essentially like conventional jet engines, whereas Ram jets just use the intense force of incoming airflow and then compresses it in order to achieve higher speeds. Now, that doesn't work unless the plane is already traveling at a very high speed, so you use the turbo jets to get up to about Mach 3, and then after that, the Ram jets take you up to about Mach 5. Once the space engine system's aircraft achieve hypersonic velocities, they transition over to a conventional rocket engine, about 445 kilonewtons, or about a third more powerful than the rocket engine that drives the Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2. Now, to be clear, they use two separate kinds of engines in order to achieve this performance, not a hybrid engine that is both a rocket engine and a jet engine. So you have the turbojet ramjet engines that allow them to achieve hypersonic velocities, and then after that, the rocket engine takes over. By the way, their current design calls for a liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen solution for their rocket engine because they're trying to be as green as possible. As you can see here, the capabilities of these space planes are considerable. The Hello 1 has the ability to deliver 550 kilograms into low Earth orbit by means of a transfer vehicle, and the Hello 2 really takes things up to the next level. We're talking at least 5 metric tons into low Earth orbit, 700 kilograms to land on the lunar surface, and 520 kilograms to low Mars orbit. By the way, it also has the capability of delivering one and a half metric tons to lunar orbit. Now, Space Engine Systems has a piloted philosophy with the vast majority of their craft. The intention is to have these aircraft piloted for the vast majority of their mission configurations and then to glide back down once the payload is delivered. Of course, automated pilots are going to be the best solution with the initial testing, but the whole idea is for these things to become manned eventually and also to provide passive passenger travel for hypersonic point-to-point -point transportation. Now, this was an arrangement that had been set down months ago, and of course, I've been reporting on it ever since, but just a few days ago, the relationship was formalized. That is to say that Space Engine Systems is officially leasing some property from Spaceport Cornwall as a testing facility for their new engines, whether it be rocket or ramjet, turbojet, etc. And once the sex bomb is transferred over to the spaceport, I still keep getting thrown every time I say that. But anyway, once this aircraft arrives in Spaceport Cornwall, it's not only going to be testing space engine systems, engines and such, it's also going to be operating as a hypersonic test bed for other customers, which means residents in the New Key area can expect to see a wide variety of hypersonic tests taking place from their airport. And here's the biggest advantage that Spaceport Cornwall can offer not only Space Engine Systems, but all of their future customers as well. Spaceport Cornwall built a wide variety of integration facilities designed to accommodate not only a few hundred kilograms with Virgin Orbit, but also four or five ton payloads from Sierra Space, which means that Spaceport Cornwall already has the necessary necessary integration facilities to put these types of payloads into these aircraft in the future, which means they're already set up for this kind of business. No additional infrastructure really needs to be added. This kind of capability is something that very few small spaceports really have at their disposal and will give Spaceport Cornwall a significant advantage when dealing with customers like Space Engine Systems. Exciting stuff coming to Britain. I will keep you informed on all of it. Please like, please subscribe, please hit those notification bells and check the description for various ways to support my content. And as always, stay angry about space.